Hey everybody, how are you doing? Today's Get Ready With Me is requested from, I've had a few requests for makeup lately. Eye makeup, mostly foundation. Um, one was from a few videos back and then this last video I just did where I was in my office and did the top 10 for March. So what I had on in that one, and actually if you follow me on Instagram, I actually did, I think that day, uh, a little story showing you what my foundation combination was because I was really liking it. I've been wearing that off and on, and it is a combination of the It CC Cream. I have it in two different colors. Both of these are pretty low right now, but I have backups, and the Wonder Beauty. This is a little yellow for me. Um, I mix foundations all the time. I love mixing foundations because usually it gets me the right tone. It gets me maybe the right finish. I pretty much mix everything with this. I feel like this foundation or CC cream makes everything better. I've been doing this for years and years talking about it. Um, so anyway, lately I have been using the Fair Light because I feel like that just makes the tone really good this time of year. If I have a foundation that's too light, I move in to the light. I wear light, I have medium, light, and fair light in the CC cream. What is funny is I've tried out two different foundations lately. I'll show you and the tones were so wrong. And if I don't like the foundation, I won't take it off. I'll just put this over it and it makes it better. So what's funny is I tried out the new, um, Good Apple foundation. This color is totally wrong for me though. It is very yellow on the skin, so I didn't love it. I don't think I love it anyway, but when I started seeing this talked about, it reminded me of back in the day, some of you may remember this, that I loved this by CoverGirl. So I went and bought this again, which the price on this is like highway robbery now. Of course I bought it at Walgreens, which is like $3 more than Target, but that's where I happened to be when I thought of it. And um, I used to love this. I have to say either the formula changed or just my taste and skin has changed, which it could be a combination of all of that. I don't love this as much anymore. Um, however, the other day I thought, you know what, I just wanna keep trying this. So I used this and this is what it looks like. You need to buy a little bit darker than you think in this because I feel like with the swirl, it's lighter than you think. That could be some of the problem too. I think I have color 225, yeah. Anyway, so I put a darker CC cream over this. So this was too light. That's just how you make everything work. You know, I feel like I'm always experimenting <laughs> with things. Um, so anyway, put this over it and I loved it. It looked great. So that's how I'm gonna get use out of this is pair it with this. So I just wanted to mention that because again, I mix everything with this. I feel like for, I mean, probably a year, my go-to, has been the Shiseido, <clears throat> excuse me, the Synchro Skin Foundation. I have this in two different colors and I mix these and to me this is perfect. This has been long lasting, just love it on my skin. This can be a little dry since like it's a kind of oil-free long wearing foundation. I also like mixing it with the YSL All Hours. Um, I think those are kind of similar, the All Hours and the Shiseido, but I think I like the Shiseido a little bit more. Anyway. Just felt like I needed to mention all the combinations that I've been loving lately. And I've mentioned it before, but I have been wearing my foundation with a dry sponge for I don't know how long, at least probably more than a year, but consistently about a year. This is the one from Tarte I've been using. I love this one. I need to wash this one's why it's sitting here. This is the Real Techniques, love that one. So, what I'm gonna do is sometimes I mix them up on my hand. Sometimes with this one, since it has that nice wand, I just go ahead and put it on my face first. I shake it up because this is pretty liquidy. And let's see here. This is in the color light. And again, it's a little too yellow for me. I do have a video, just this foundation only, back, uh, I don't know, a year or so ago, They sent me some products and I love their foundations. I actually just bought a backup of the powder foundation because I keep this in my purse for touch-ups and I missed it, having it so much that I wanted it right here on my vanity too. So I bought a second one. Um, and this one I wear medium, love that. So there's that. I guess I will do, I'll still do the fair light. Let's see if I can get anything out of this. And I'll just put this directly on the sponge. I just do a pump, but again, I'm running out, so. And I just kinda 
fill in areas. It seems like a lot of foundation. It kind of is sometimes. I do like probably mixing it on the back of my hand more. And then I just kind of spread it around at first. And I like the dry sponge. I think I've mentioned this, but to me, you get much better coverage with the dry sponge. And I like them when they have a flat end, this angle. To me, that's the game changer. But I hadn't used the Wonder Foundation in a while and I knew it was a little yellow, so I thought that's what made me think to mix them one day. And I do go on my eyelids just because I have discoloration and allergies have been terrible. Um, it's getting a little better. And with the sponge, I like too because I can really press into where you have larger pores. Like I have larger pores here and I have a scar over here from past skin cancer. Which the older I get, this thing is so old. It's probably, it's at least probably 15 years old um, or more. The older I get, the more it keeps showing up. I don't know if I'm going to have to get like maybe some filler in it or something. But it's kind of bugging me a little bit. And then always right around my mouth, uh, where I have like past acne scarring. And I bring it down a little bit. I usually bring myself tanner kind of up to here because this is usually white on me. Um, and then everything blends. It's starting to fade slightly, so you can just see the coverage is amazing. And then if I ever feel like I got too much somewhere, I'll just flip the sponge over to where it's a little more dry and just press it to kind of pick up some of that extra. I still have a little redness over here. I'll definitely need uh, more laser treatments. I told you I had gotten laser treatments the last couple months. I got three of them with the IPL. She can't go up very strong with it because my skin is just so sensitive and I get really red with it. And on my cheeks. It, I don't, I swell on my cheeks. So we're a little afraid to go up too, too high, but of course I'd get better results if we could. But anyway, so I'll need probably another one in the fall. But I do feel like I saw a difference. I, I do like foundation like kind of on the edge, but I don't like looking at myself with it totally all over my lips, like a mannequin, <laughs> it looks weird. So next I am going to use the Tarte Shape Tape. I had done a video on the Shape Tape Ultra Creamy. I kind of go back and forth. I was in a kick of using the Ultra Creamy and now I feel like I'm kind of leaning back in towards the regular. And what I had mentioned in a video is um, I may end up using the regular in the summer uh, and then the winter when your skin's a little more dry, I use the Ultra Creamy. Sorry, the light behind me is kind of changing a little bit. So I'm going to use the regular again today. That's what I've been using the last few days. Just use it kind of where I have a little bit more redness. And then I love, again, with a dry sponge, these little ones from Roll Techniques. So the same thing, they're just a smaller version. I use the pointed in for uh, concealer under my eyes and I usually use the flat in for anything on my face. And I tend to do my face first and let it sit under my eyes a minute. And I do take it all over my eye again because it acts kind of like a primer not only it evens everything out and then I kind of like rotate it to use the other side for the other eye. So I had mentioned allergies. I felt like in that last video I could tell my allergies were really bothering me. I was like very low energy. The allergies are getting better but I'm telling you the low energy. That's why I have not been on Instagram much lately. I don't think I did a video last week. I just have had no energy. And um, I'm actually going back in next week to uh, get my lab follow-up for my thyroid. I got it done, yeah, I get it done every six months. I haven't talked about my thyroid in a long time because it has not really changed at all. Um, 
I've been on the same dose for, I don't know, like seven years, I guess. It was right before I turned 40 when I started, I uh, finally got diagnosed and started taking medicine. I'd done some videos about it. Um, this is just the fresh sugar lip balm, love that. Anyway, the last time I was there, they said my T4 levels were a little off. But I didn't want to change anything because they put me on something else for like inflammation that I think they start all their thyroid patients on. So I thought, well, I didn't want to take something new and change that. So anyway, and sometimes with the thyroid, with me, I have to worry about heart palpitations, like if you change it a little too much. So anyway, but it is reminding me how I feel exactly how I felt seven years ago before I got diagnosed, where if you guys have thyroid problems, you know the exhaustion is real. I mean, it just takes over you. It's like you can't do anything about it, like muscle weakness, tiredness. Of course, I've went back and forth with, oh, is it hormones? Because I can tell, you know, my hormones are up and down all over the place with like perimenopause. That could be affecting the thyroid, of course. Just all kind of symptoms, but I do wonder if my thyroid's messed up and because the medication I was on, they were having a hard time getting that, so we had to switch to something else. And the dosage ratio is a little off, it's not exact, and I wonder if that had something to do with it. So I go next week to find out about my thyroid to see if it's a little off again. I'm really curious because if it is, I'll be like, heck yeah, give me the new up my dosage a little. I'm on a really low dose anyway compared to most people, it's like 30 or something like that. Anyway, uh, just if you haven't seen me a whole lot, that's why I've just been so tired and allergies just cannot get myself together. Uh, Laura Mercier powder. I powder quite a bit because I feel like I've noticed um, that just makes the makeup set and it helps fill in any, like I have a nice little laugh line going on over here. Um, you know, just helps everything set. So what I do is take this sponge, it needs to be washed. This is real techniques as well. Love that, put this in here and I kind of just press it in, especially around my chin and then I'll use a brush too. But I really focus down here, pressing it in to all the little pores and lines and everything. Anywhere you might have large pores or trouble with like makeup, you know, coming off. Then I will take my big brush. I get asked about this brush a lot. It's the Sephora Pro Air Brush 55. I'll just take some and I'll do the rest, like my forehead and, especially around my cheeks. I feel like I have a hard time with um, my cheeks and bronzer and blush. Like as soon as I do my bronzer, it'll kind of take that off a bit. And then I just press everything in. So this will give you a very matte look, but I find as your makeup wears, you know, and settles and everything, it'll look really good. Won't be too matte, at least it's not for, for me. But I do probably prefer a little bit matte so it doesn't, um, show all my imperfections. And I use this tiny little sponge here and the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. I've used other things off and on over the years, but I find I went back to this and I like it. All right, on to the rest of the face. I have been back and forth with bronzers. Now, as it gets a little more into the summer, I will break back out the Charlotte Tilbury. This is amazing, love that, it goes on so smooth. I've kind of been using two different ones lately. The one in this Hourglass palette, it is the Luminous Bronze Light. So it looks like that. Or the uh, Hula. And I've actually been all using all three of these lately, I love. So I'm actually gonna use the Hula, I think. I don't know, maybe I'll use both, but. do my temples anymore because as you can see as we get older most of us our temples start sinking in 
So you don't want that there. Again, like I said, I think I'm going to use both. It's always the good cheekbone. It's a little higher. <laughs> it looks a little more pronounced with the bronzer than this one. Then, I guess I'm just going to use this as highlight too. I'm just going to use, uh, kind of I go all over all these, but mainly the middle one, I guess. I don't know, this is the step I've just been doing for, I don't know how long. Bronzer, then highlight, and then the blush over it. I don't like the highlight on top of my blush. I like it to kind of peek out. So, we might as well just use this blush then. I've been going back and forth between these two. These two are Luminous Flush and Mood Exposure. They are very similar, honestly, if I use this, which I think this is what I used in that video. Um, what is this, Sugar Bomb? It's kind of similar to that, especially the flush one, so. You kind of, you get the same look. I don't remember what I actually used in that video, but that's my guess is I used this palette. And then if I feel like anything looks a little muddy, I'll take like that lightest shade in here. And just kind of clean up around it. Eyebrows, I've been using both of these lately. I kind of go back and forth, but what I've been doing is just drawing a line with the brow whiz and then filling in with the brow definer. And I use the color taupe. And I need to come in a little bit with mine. But I just find I like that defined uh, line underneath. So that day, I think I actually just had a really simple eye on, I think it might have been the Laura Mercier, the um, Au Naturel stick, and then just mascara. Um, I kind of go back and forth. I've been using that a lot, but also I've been using this. I don't know why I picked this up on a whim, probably a month or two ago. It's the L'Oreal uh, Nude palette, and I really like it. It's really pretty. Uh, the colors are very nice and they go on nice, so I think I'm gonna use that today. So this third color here. This is a little bit warmer than I like, but it looks okay. I have to be careful with warm shades. Now it does have some dust up, I feel like, but so does my Tarte palette too, so it doesn't bother me too much. Somebody had asked me about eyes and how I make everything look like simple but wearable. Um, I don't know, I kind of feel like I do the same look all the time because I just know what looks the best on me. I do change it up with colors, but as far as what I found easiest and what I like on me anymore as I get older, I use this Morphe brush. I have a couple of them. It's the M433, so it's a little bit fluffier. Put the color right where you want the most, like in the corner, and I just, kind of start a little tiny circle and then I bring it up. Now this is my more hooded eyelid, so I have to bring it up pretty far and I have a lot of lid space, so I will bring this up quite high for me. Whatever your kind of mid-tone um, that you're going for, that's just what I do. And again, you know, I concentrate all that out in the corner and then bring it up. Then I will sometimes use that same brush and just add a darker color to it. Or I will use a smaller brush and 
just concentrated more on the outside. A so. smaller flat brush like this. This is in a Sony Kashuk brush number 106. And I will take whatever color you want. Like today, or sometimes like I'll take say these two mid-tones, layer them, and then do a darker. Um, this is a matte and like a, I don't know, satin. Maybe I'll take a satin and see. I just play around and I'll concentrate that on the outer corner just to deepen it up. I do always open my eye just so I can see it a little bit, you know, in that crease. And I will just blend that out. Typically when I blend, I blend towards the middle or down. I don't want to muddy it up too, too much. I can't tell what the angle, the light coming in behind me, if one is uh, higher up than the other, but we can fix that. Per usual with me, I almost always, unless I'm just doing a one shade look, I take a pink shade, it's probably this second one, and put it on the lid. It just really brightens my eyes. And then like I might take the one on the end, you know, the two lighter and like, you know, maybe do in the inner corner a little. And then I'm gonna take that one on the very end just to brighten up this brow bone since I got this one a little high. It has a little more sheen to it than I like for the brow bone, but I will fix that. And then I almost always take my um, concealer sponge and kind of clean up on the edges if I've, I've, you know, if I've gotten it down a little too far. You can really see that highlight in there. It's a little much. So if it is a little much, I will just take my powder brush normally and kind of go over it. Or again, you could take your uh, foundation. See, I don't feel like on this one it's terrible, but maybe it's just the angle coming in behind me with the light, I should have put the blinds down a little and just kind of, you know, take it down a little bit. I pretty much can't go without this. This is, uh, I'm getting low on this one again. This is, I don't know, my second or third one. This is the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Iced Mocha. Uh, I will either put shadow from a palette down here, but most times this is just quick and easy, so I do this. Eyeshadow primer. Do not ever I don't think I ever put on mascara without this. Now I have used this one. This is the L'Oreal. I've used it since they came out with it. Like, I don't know, how many years has it been now? Three, four? And I've been going back and forth with mascara. Um, I still really am loving this. This is the Tarte Big Ego, um, the Lash Paradise. I haven't used this one in a while, so I think I'm gonna use it. Did I say Tarte? Yeah, Tarte Big Ego, and this is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. And then for bottom lash mascara, I like this for the top too. I actually just bought a new one because this one's getting a little dried out. This is the NYX On The Rise. This is really good. And then I thought I would try out this. Um, it's the Benefit Bad Gal Bang. This, I don't love it for my actual lashes because I like a little more fullness, but this is a great mascara if you're wanting lengthening or for bottom lash mascara. Like, see how tiny, tiny, tiny the bristles are? I think some of you would just absolutely love that, especially if you're wanting to really get in the corners. That's a good one. All right, lip color. I I don't remember what I was wearing in that video. However, I think I just bought a new backup of Laura Mercier Plumberry because I have been wearing that a ton. 
pretty much Plumberry or Mac Whirl or um, Milani Nude, which is just a good pink. I will do the Plumberry. All right, so just filling lips with that. I've been going back and forth with a few different glosses. I just bought a new one of the Laura Mercier. This is the Bear Baby. I had a little small size, love that one. I also, let's see, I really like these two Fenty glosses. I kind of just switch it up. There was a Pat McGrath, where is that? Here it is, this is a really good one. Um, I might have had this one on in that video. I can't see. It's like gold writing and I can't really see. Oh, Dare to Bear. Let's, let's use that one. I always blot off the excess. I don't like that feel. Then the best thing, I think I've talked about this in a favorites, but I don't know. I just bought another one. When this came out last year, I think it was, yeah, it was last year, I bought the uh, Charlotte Tilbury. This is setting spray. I have a little bit left, so I'm waiting to use some of this and dump this into this one, but I can't get this out anymore. So I just bought a new one. This I love. I'm just looking around here to see if there was anything new I hadn't told you guys about. Oh, I, I bought one of these the other day. I haven't had one in a while and it was old. This is probably one of my top five lipsticks of all time. This is the L'Oreal uh, Ferris Nude. It's funny, like I said, I hadn't had one in a long time. I just love this one. This is my favorite. I love the smell. It's very nostalgic <laughs> to me because that was my very first lipstick in junior high was L'Oreal back when they were in the purple tubes. Loved it. Anyway, so that was new. I think that is all. I told you about that makeup over there. I think that was all of the new makeup. Oh, I also got asked about how I did my hair in that video. It changes all the time. If I tried to redo it, like it would not look the same. Most of the time I just pull it up. Um, I don't know. I think I had it where I pinned down the pieces. I mean, everybody has videos on it. They do the same thing. But then sometimes I don't do it that way. I need my hair colored badly, but I'm trying to wait since we're going on our anniversary trip the end of the month. So let my hair air dry here a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and this answered some of your questions about what I was wearing, how I do certain things. If you guys try this combination, definitely let me know. Or if you're just experimenting in general with your foundations, let me know if you find a good one. If you're not yet subscribed, please do so. I make new videos every week. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time and I will see you in the next video. Bye.